Alright folks, welcome back to the Gen X Gamer. I am Karak Alvaron and today we are on Steam to give an update on a game that I do feature on the channel. It's called Medieval Dynasty. Medieval Dynasty is a survival slash town builder slash RPG game. It's actually a pretty unique little gem of a game, if I may say so myself. It, it feels a little dated, but it's, it's a pretty... I, I like it. And so that's why I play it, because as you know, on my channel, I play games that I really enjoy. So before I get going, let me say thank you. Thank you for taking your time to watch my content. I appreciate it. Please remember to like, subscribe, share. All that stuff really helps the channel out, and I appreciate the support. So the reason why we're talking about Medieval Dynasty is, is they have a new update to the game, which enables co-op. This is a whole new map for Medieval Dynasty with all new build locations, quests, new economy, etc. It's, it's going to be a, a completely different gaming experience. Um, it's likely that some of the other content creators that you follow have probably featured this on their channel as well. I've watched quite a bit of the um, beta testing on some of the other uh, larger content creators' channels. And it looks pretty good to me. I think we're gonna, I'm going to be playing it. Um, I don't know if we're going to do a series on, on it on the channel, if I'm just going to live stream it, I'm not sure. But today we're going to do a patch note review, so we're going to go through that. So the co-op mode is out now on Steam as of 12-7-2023. The big day has arrived. Today the gates of the Oxbow finally open and you can explore the new land. This is a new map and it is it comes with the base game so this is not a dlc you don't have to pay for it so if you have medieval dynasty in your library uh, you can update it and you get this whole free map with all this new content i would encourage you to do that if you don't have it i would check out the game and look for a sale it's a fun game um i'm always hesitant to pay full price for games that's just me this is not an urgent must play game but if you, you know it's on sale you should grab it or if you've got the disposable income and you don't care just pick it up now so let's see um experience a new adventure new adventures in the oxbow discover beautiful and exciting new places and build your own settlement in this wonderful neighborhood you can go solo or with friends so that's the big sell here is you can play co-op mode which is pretty cool i usually play most of my games solo there's a very good reason for that um which I'll, maybe I'll get into in a future video, but uh, for a lot of people, they like to play co-op, and that's cool. You can, you know, build your town together, etc. So the, it, it basically just tells you it's launching on Steam today, um, and it's the version for the PS5, Xbox series, and other PC platforms will be released in quarter one or Q2 of 2024. So um, this is for PC right now, and I think for the... I think that Medieval Dynasty came to console earlier this year, and this is going to be—it's going to be a little bit delayed getting this onto console. So that's keep that in mind. Um, there is a character creator in this particular map, so you can play as a female if you so choose and customize your character. Whereas before, we just had one character that we could choose from; everybody looked the same. So this one's pretty cool. I've looked at the character creation. Ah, it's not bad. You can have a beard. Um, decent haircut, change your eye color. You know, it's not a super in-depth character creator with um, minute sliders, but it's good enough for this type of game. It uh, goes on to talk about, um, you know, what they're going to continue to do. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. In the near future, we will continue to improve our game to give you the best possible experience. However, as we reach the co-op mode up, as we reached the co-op mode update launch on Steam, it's a great moment to look ahead for the roadmap. So here's the 2023 Steam update, 2024 co-op update consoles and other platforms. That's Q1, Q2. 2024 armors chests and shields and more 2024 2025 um this particular developer top lids has quite a few projects in the works you've probably seen senkuku which is japanese based it's it's almost 
it, it's like this game to a great degree. It's it's based in J feudal Japan, which is pretty cool. Um, they've got a Wild West game. Um, they've got quite a few things uh, going right now they're working on, and some of them look fairly interesting. They have a vampire game that looks pretty interesting. Um, they've got a decent little product here. Now, they use Unreal Engine, so, you know, the graphics are, you know, pretty good. But the base game of what they've created is is the heart of all of the other subsequent games that come. And it's not bad. The only, the only issue I have really is some of the AI in combat, but this isn't really a combat game. So, but otherwise, it's it's not a bad little game. And, I, and you know, it's cool that they've got a roadmap. Um, you know, it's not complete, but they do have other games coming, so stay tuned for that. But this is patch 2.0, so let's see what they're adding. Um, Co-op mode, Expo, ex Oxbow exclusive. The new map, a new storyline, which is cool. New side quests, new generic quests, character creator, playable female character. Female player's husband can take care of an infant is cool. Ability to romance and marry men as a female character. That's cool. New flirting dialogue lines. Uh, new gifts for men. Cool. There's a notice board. Quests in the main village in the Oxbow. So you're getting a new map. You're getting the ability to play with up to four uh, yeah, it's up to four people, so three friends. Um, there's new there's new quests, which is cool. So that's the RPG element. The quests are okay. The dialogue is okay in this game. Um, I thought the, the story for um, the valley, the first map, was actually pretty good. The main storyline, I thought it was decent. I enjoyed it, and I like a good RPG. It's not, you know, it's not super in-depth, but it's not horrible either it's it, it it's in a nice sweet spot this game will probably occupy it'll be like a like your side game right like if you're burnt out like if you're a day z player right and you've been playing you know you've got you know 40 hours in the last two weeks and you're like all right i need a break from day z this is a nice game to kind of float over to so that's cool um you know, you got a fem you can play a female, so that's cool. And you know, all the things that you could do as a male in the original map, you can do now do as a female, which is the way it should be. I mean, you can flirt. You can get, you know, gifts for your for the male um, male that you're trying to court. Um, the men can take care of the babies, which is great, which they should. Um, it may not be. Let's talk about that for a minute. It may not be the way that it actually was in medieval times. But I want to be clear here that it, this isn't woke, right? Like, they're not, like, it's not a girl boss. Like, <laughs> you, you can make a female, but it, you have to go through everything else that a male character would have to do, right? It's not that kind of RPG where, you know, um, characters take on different attributes because of either their gender, you know, where they're from, etc. No, these are just blank slates that you start with, and, and the fact that, you know, you can play a female now is just, it's the same literally blank slate that a male would have. So, you know, get there's no woke here. It's just, it's fitting that, you know, if you're going to play a female and you get married, your husband assumes the role that you would have had you been, had you been a male character. There was no other easy way for them to do it. If they made it historical, traditionally, the female would have stayed home and the man would have gone out and, you know, built the buildings, etc. That's how they get around it. It is what it is. Notice board is interesting because you get quests in the main village in the Oxbow. Now before, and it may still be the case, you used to get your quests from different villagers, different NPC characters. You may still do that, but notice boards are pretty cool. Maybe there's some bounties, etc. That'd be cool. Um, this chat, which is nice. Uh, you'll need that for your co-op play. Some emotes. New songs, which is cool. Uh, new notification sounds. Interesting. NPC chatter with audio during gameplay. That was something that was uh, odd in the first the first go around. They were really just they they got it out and. The first map was good, but it wasn't completely flushed out. 
when I say, what I mean is is that you know you could tell that it was a really base game that they were just you know they they got out now they developed it pretty well and it became a nice game I mean I enjoy medieval dynasty I think it's a fun game I featured it on the channel and you know those videos did pretty well I know there's there's a, a fan base out there for it um but yeah the NPCs didn't really talk much their facial expressions were all just kind of you know slates blank slates so that's cool you've got NPC chatter facial expressions lip sync that's cool 400 NPC names over 50 new NPC presets okay cradles for infants interesting and some build stuff you've got 42 new furniture and decorations that's cool that's one of the nice that's one of the cool parts of this game is just you build your own village and you can choose the decorations for houses etc um, gates fences uh, tablecloths it's that's pretty cool that's one of the nice parts about this game is is the town building and um, making money and setting up an efficient town where everybody's working well etc and you know this quest that you get from the king and and you know that affects your town it's they do a really good job with that the RPG element in this game is is pretty good I'm really happy with how they've done it it's right down the middle it's not too too intrusive or heavy to force you to like you have to complete these quests to progress what you want to do in the game like it's enough it's it's open world to the point where you you can not do any quests at all you can just go build stuff if you want um so that's cool that they've done that um what else we got listen mechanic for dialogues and co-op okay reading letters and notes mechanic yes we didn't have that before unique basic dialogue trees for every resident that's cool and there's a bunch of fixes in there let's see updated quest items now have separate quest inventory okay they rebalanced the economy that's actually a big one because there was a couple of ways that you could really make a lot of money um, and it made it made the original map pretty easy to master honestly that's good you, it should be challenging you shouldn't be able to be super wealthy quickly but we'll see how that goes a wild animal stats and loot rebalance okay all right so they did a lot of rebalancing here farming talents talents are you know hunting trapping as an example there's a whole bunch of those there's, there is like a a talent tree um technology tree you know you learn stuff it, the more houses you build the better builder you become that type of thing and that's cool that they rebalance that because some of that was also you could just sit there with a hoe and farm up like a just a, a chunk of land that didn't even belong to you and just level up your farming and you know pretty fast um it was kind of nonsense really I mean, yeah, you had to spend your time doing it, but still, like, you know, it's not really a farm. It's just a piece of land on the side of the road. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. Um, fast travel is reduced because I, the overall economy, from what I've seen, has been nerfed quite a bit. It's not as easy to get money, so that's cool. Reworked behavior of wild animals. That's good, because wild animals would usually just run from you. Some of them should be aggressive. Um... Animal collisions. Animals can be pushed. Characters do not get blocked on them. Okay. Reworked mount controls. Mount. You, so yes, you can have a horse or a donkey, and you can um, ride that horse and donkey around the map, which is actually uh, pretty important. It was kind of wonky, but it worked. I always had to go into first person for that to make it work for me. I I, I played my games in mostly third person. But, it, you know, like like Skyrim, I'll go into first person when I'm in combat. Or um, DayZ, I'll go into first person a lot when I'm, like, doing some sniper work. But for this game, for, for riding alone, that's the only time I really needed to manipulate the mouse. Because it was just so wonky. Um, what else we got? Numerous tweaks and improvements to terrain. Okay. Temperature system. Yes interesting so they touched on that so it 
it's a survival game as well. Like, there's a whole bunch of elements in here. There's RPG, there's town building, but there is survival. If you run around out in the cold, there is winter. If you're out in the cold and you don't have enough clothes on, you'll freeze to death. You'll die. If you don't eat, you'll die. If you don't drink, you'll die. Like, there's, you know... And the whole point of it is, is it's a dynasty. You have to have children to perpetuate your dynasty. If you don't have kids, the story ends. So that's cool that they the temp because the temperature system was kind of easy to manipulate. Now I don't know how deep it's gone, but as an example, you know you need to bathe yourself because there's a dirty factor as well. If you run around for you know days and days and don't wash your clothes, you begin to smell. And there's a there's a little icon that tells you how dirty you are, and that affects your interactions with other people. People don't want to talk to you if you stink, right? <laughs> it's kind of cool they got that in there. But the point is, is if you need to then go wash your clothes, well, if it's the middle of the winter and you take your clothes off and go run into a lake to wash up, you're going to be pretty damn cold. So that's cool. Um, and, and that's a little nuanced nuance of the game that's, again, it's... It's not super in depth, but it's in depth enough. Like that's that's an example of it. They've done a pretty good job on on some of the pieces of the puzzle here. Okay. Um. Wow, they did a lot. Capacity of furniture has been added in the description section. Okay. Tutorials won't show during combat. Good. Sounds for chickens. Okay, they changed some of the sounds, replaced the gloomy night song. Okay, that's cool. Esca excavation shed can, can extract copper ore. Goats now use a bucket during milking. Okay, cool. Um, encumbered multiplier now stops at 50% speed reduction until max weight is reached. Okay. That's cool. That's actually pretty important because you, once you, it, it continually encumbered you to the point where you would be walking so slow, and it was like you know I just want one more log, dude, one more, you know, and you knew that you could move. Um, that's actually it. Uh, for, for realism, it's not great, but for the actual gameplay, like as someone who's got you know 400, 500 hours into this game. Um, for the actual gameplay, that's a pretty good fix. Um, maximum health potion now also increases current health. Okay, Goats now use a bucket during milking. Fantastic. We can get copper oil from the excavation shed. That's cool. Alright, you do have to pay your taxes. And that reduces your re reputation, which is, reputation is important. Increased penalties for killing livestock. Okay, yes, you can't just go and kill other other people's animals. Rasimir's clothes replaced with a new starting equipment. Okay, so Rasimir is the name of the character for the first map, which is the valley. Looks like they updated his starting clothes for the valley exclusively. And languages are updated. So, I mean, there's a couple of other updates that I didn't read here. Overall, Medieval Dynasty is a great little game. It's a gem. I love I love this game. I love it because it's one of those games that I can like I can play like on a Friday. Like say I have a Friday off, like this big snowstorm or something. And I've got like two or three hours. I can just play it, you know, save the game and then maybe pick it up in a week or a day or, you know, even longer and just like be comfortable jumping back in. It's one of those it's fairly casual but you get out of it what you put in. If you focus on this game, if you focus on the town building and your villagers and making money and um, enhancing your buildings and working on your reputation, it's it, it's a game that can really pull you in. And the quests aren't bad either. It's also one of those games that you can play extremely casually. I love games like that. Because if you've been subscribed to my channel for a while, you know that I play all sorts of different games. I may feature like four or five on the channel exclusively, but I've got a whole bunch that I play that I never show on the channel because people aren't interested in them. You know, I mean, you can see over here on, on the left side all the games I have. I mean, you know, no one's ever asked me about Aces High, you know, um, you know, Albion, 
Assassin's the old Assassin's Creed. You know, there's a whole bunch of games that I play, and I'm just a gamer, and I like to play video games. And some of them I think are really cool to share with other people. Obviously, the popular ones, right? Like you know, when Elden Ring was out, I shared that. When um, Hogwarts Legacy was popular, I shared some of the videos there. But I'm not doing series on you know Hearts of Iron 2 anymore. That game is 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 really old but i still play it this is a really cool casual game and if you're coming from my valheim community you know i would say that this game is i i don't i don't think that you you would necessarily like it too much i say that because there's there's more rpg element than survival survival element in this game is probably the the lowest on the tier it's mostly a town city builder then an rpg with quest then a survival game it's still a fun game to play don't get me wrong but if you're like you know valheim or hardcore survival maybe you play like v rising or something like that or you're waiting for like enshrouded this is not a hardcore survival game it's softcore survival game, for lack of a better term. Um, for my Lord of the Rings online audience, I, I think this is a fun game that you would enjoy because the story is pretty cool, but there's an end to the story, right? Like it's not like it's not like what we have now in Lord of the Rings online or just Lord of the Rings, you know, Tolkien's. Uh, legendarium all his stories which are just these huge elaborations of centuries and centuries and centuries of stories that harken back to other stories that happened thousands of years millennia ages prior this is just a you know a story where you you know you wake up and you got to figure out what the hell happened and you're running around and you're probably going to get 15 to 20 hours of gameplay out of that just the RPG piece alone, those those quests, and then you know the the side quest. You know, it's, you're gonna it's gonna be familiar to what you've seen maybe in Lord of the Rings Online. We gotta go out and hunt ten wolves or something like that. So I think this would be a nice little casual game for that group. For everybody else in my audience, the people here just to you know kind of watch me game, or maybe you came from the early days from like Skyrim, etc. Um, Medieval Dynasty is a cool little game. I would. Definitely check it out. Look for it on Steam. Look for it on sale, though. I think this is definitely a game that you want in your library if you like this type of uh, type of game, but you want to get it on sale. I think you. It's not going to be cheap. You know, it's. I think it's like 26, 27 bucks right now, which you know depends on your income level. I'm not here to to shame anybody. For me, you know, I can throw 26 dollars or whatever I want. However. I believe that you should be a diligent consumer and I think that this will probably go on sale sometime if not Christmas sometime early in January the this will go on sale I've seen it on sale before if you're thinking about getting it wait for it to go on sale check out some videos make sure that it's the type of game you want for the people that are here because they're here from medieval dynasty you already know how cool this game is I think it's a hidden gem um, I think it's a fine game. I think this is a great primary game for anybody. Okay, This is not my main game, but I can see this being a main game for a lot of people. I'm going to do more Medieval Dynasty content on the channel, so you can look forward to that if that's what you're into. Um, it's probably going to be in the form of some live streams on my Saturday night stream, and there will probably be some... Uh, I'm going to show some quests as well. So hopefully this interests you. Hopefully uh, this news is good news for you. Medieval Dynasty Co-op is now available. You can download it as part of your regular Medieval Dynasty in your library if you've already purchased it. This update is free. Um, those are the patch notes. There's a lot here to like. So tell me what you think in the comments below. I really appreciate you coming by and taking your time to watch my content as always. Please remember to like, subscribe, share. Thank you for coming by, and I'll talk to you again soon.